Good morning, 25th of September 2024, and we're going to go over part of Section 2 that has to do with volunteering and searching in this episode. This podcast is rated for a mature audience only. If you are under 18 years old, this content is not for you. Thank you for visiting us. There's plenty of other content on YouTube for you to watch. Have a great day. All content not created by the blue-haired bingo babe, that's me, belongs to its original creator. It is used to substantiate, augment, or exemplify this author's content. It is used under Title 17, Section 107 of U.S. Code, governing fair use for news, education, and critique. In episode, I've lost count of... This is not what I plan to do today. I want to go over sections two and in part, we're going to do an abbreviated version about what the Department of Justice publication for mis- parents of missing children by parents of missing children has advised people who are currently experiencing this crisis. There are very specific guidelines We don't talk about them enough, so let's get our facts straight, as my father used to say. Full credit goes to Chasing True Crime for the inspiration for this video to go back over what the DOJ has advised. We're not going to play any of her clips, but she did give a commentary and fact-checked in real time the interview done on Friday, September 20th, 2024, on Breaking the Case. Normally, I would take you straight to the Department of Justice website, or I would take you to the readout we did of all the sections, and I would show you that. But look here. This has been on Amazon as a publication by the Department of Justice in conjunction with the eight parents of previously missing children, since 2011 or 2012. This uh, listing says $13 and some change, but uh, I've seen it right around $20. And the format is paperback, but there's also a couple of other formats as you just saw. Another thing to note is this is the fourth edition, which was last updated in 2012, and the readout that I have done from the Department of Justice's website and also from AmberAlert.org is the fifth edition, which was updated in May of this year, and it was released on Missing Child Day, May 25th, 2024. Now, I tell you all this because we so often see and hear in comments and in chats, oh, there should be a handbook, or oh, there's no handbook for um, what to do when your child is missing. And that's simply not true, as I've just shown you. So now let's go to section two and talk about volunteering and um, vetting volunteering and all that jazz from the publication written and produced by the Department of Justice. This is the handbook. Section two, the search, understanding the work of law enforcement and volunteers. Understanding the search. This gets argued with all the time. Nevertheless, these are best practices that are proven statistically to be the highest standard. While you will desperately want to help with the physical search, the best use of your energy will be to share information with investigators as soon as you get it. From remembering something, learning something new about your child's case, or simply connecting the dots regarding information you did not have before. Being available and being close to home or able to get there quickly if your child returns. Or, if you are needed by law enforcement, it is vitally important. The following checklist will help you understand what is happening and suggest ways to follow up if you believe the proper procedures are not being followed. And then, as we pointed out in the previous um, episode, these red bars are actually jump links. So, what more can you do to help? Ask your investigator what you can do to help them during the initial investigation. Ways you may be able to help include 
asking neighbors to share recent home security footage that may have captured images of your child, sending video clips showing your child's unique mannerisms, posting your child's missing flyer on neighborhood or other group social media sites, posting printed missing child flyers in places your child was last seen, monitoring and sharing current banking and credit card records, talking with the PIO, Public Information Officer, about ways to increase media interest in your child's case. We'll talk a lot about that later on in a different section. Meeting with victim advocate and learn more about their work in Chapter 7. Don't pass the victim advocate offer up. Vet them if you're unsure, but don't pass up that help. Checklist. The first 48 hours, and we went through a lot of this in the first recording for Section 1, so I will not be reading it word for word. I will be pointing out things that are important. Uh, confirm if your law enforcement agency will use a local search and rescue team, an SAR team. The National Association for Search and Rescue, NASAR, not to be confused with NASCAR, just putting it out there. Their email address is info at nasar.org or 877-893-0702. Ask what types of searches are planned. Search searches can include a variety of locations and approaches. Your case investigator can explain various searches that may involve areas where your child was last seen, your home and its surroundings, your child's school locker, neighborhood canvas, like a door-to-door -door thing, land or grid searches often used for fields, trash pickup or landfills, sea, water or air, roadblock canvases, business canvases, license plate tracking, GPS and cellular tracking. And I have bolded and highlighted these two to point out that they are different. Your cellular phone, wherever it pings in the areas, or your child's cellular phone, wherever it pings in the areas it has connected with a tower, is one data set. A separate data set is GPS tracking in your phone or in a car or, a, you know, a standalone GPS um, locator beacon. Those kinds of technologies, they're separate. They're two... Um, Distinct databases. Please understand that. All right, let me not beat the horse to death. Geomapping and database searches to confirm locations of registered or RSOs in the area. Tracking or trailing dogs, such as bloodhounds, may be brought into the scene to help with the search. They can be valuable in tracking and following your child's scent in the air and on the ground. Even if your child was carried in someone's arms or in a vehicle. If you follow Michelle After Dark, she talks about this all the time. How even if a child is being carried, which could be allegedly the case in Summer Wells' um, missing child case, where there were scent hits on single footprints, and it is speculated by the public that she was being carried, she is still shedding dead skin cells and hair, potentially hair up from her head. So, and the same thing with a vehicle. Um, there's going to be a scent pool for a period of time where a child got into or was put into a car. In this case, there are a couple of things that we need to reconsider in light of what we just talked about, searching. So the top thumbnail is from WKRN, who reported about the setup and beginning of the search in this case. Um, then a, a channel called Body Moving. Uh, I don't know a lot about her, but I know that she is uh, very dedicated when she gets her teeth into something. She's like a bulldog. She produced uh, last yesterday a video going over the helicopter footage from the news crew that was released to the public. And I have not seen this one yet, but I have seen the raw footage that has no commentary 
it's just the sound, you know, loud whine of a helicopter circling the area where the initial search was set up and that footage is from February 27th, 2024, uh, one day after Sebastian was reported missing. The reason I brought all these things up, the Department of Justice handbook and the unprepared when your child is missing playlist, as well as the helicopter footage that was just released and um, body movements analysis of it is because we have new information. We have fresh information from this helicopter footage. We have an ongoing debate about what best search practices are in these cases. And so I wanted a backdrop of reminding us a little bit of section two there's you know another two videos on that section about searching and vetting volunteers and who can do what when in that playlist from the doj that i read out back in may all of this for those of you who are new here ties into and or influences opinions or decisions about the poll that we have up currently and I apologize yesterday, I forgot to put it in show notes. I saw that I had forgotten it and I corrected it and put it in show notes, as well as in the pinned comment, asking the question, do we wanna do a poll driven review? And so far the majority of you want to do that. And I appreciate whether you said you did or you didn't. That's the whole point of doing poll driven content is to see what you the audience are interested in and whether you voted yes I want to or no I don't it is greatly appreciated that you are participating and letting me know links for everything today will be in show notes please do go vote if you have not already and anything that you can do to be better informed is always a good thing Thanks again. God bless you. See you real soon.